to the range of the site selection. So most species are gonna need at least four hours of sunlight. Okay? So if you you know if you got a spot that's totally shady, you think it's getting less than four hours, it's probably not gonna be very good big block. Okay? And and keep in mind, like I said, as you plant something, try to project into the future. And the and the, the best scenario I can give you is a fire break that's running around the property or a right of way that's going through the property and, and you've only got it 15, 16 foot wide. You know, what's going to happen? As trees get bigger, they're going to shade that out. So I always encourage people as they're putting in these fire breaks and they're going to use them for food plots, make them as wide as you can because you need that four hours of sunlight. So bigger is usually better. Remember, you don't have to plant all the acres. And I'll talk about this a couple of times, but the bigger you can make it, the better off you're going to be, even if you don't plant. Okay? So we always allow 5% of the acres to be to be in food plot. So a lot of those guys that I work with them, they say, well, you know, I've got, uh, you know, 800 acres here. You know, I don't need 40 acres of food plot. I can't afford to plant 40 acres of food plot. And I certainly understand that. I said, take all you can use. Because you'll never get it back. All right? As timber begins to grow, you're going to lose that ground. But if you take, if you have the most available open ground you can get, you can keep, as I mentioned earlier, they had the open ground. You can plant it when you need to. And there's also a benefit of native plot, not even plant them. Sometimes just disking them is going to encourage herbaceous form growth that deer really relish. That's what they make their living on 12 months out of the year. Having those natural forbs in there, and you've got a somewhat natural food plot all the time. So that's what they're, they're living on out in the woods. So uh, bigger is always better, even if you don't plant it. And you can also have a soft, you know, if this was our food plot and you planted just the ends, you can come around the edges and just let that grow up and brush about this high and create a soft edge effect as you get into bigger timber. That gives you some diversity. They're a lot of times feel more comfortable walking out in it right before dark. If possible, focus on productive soil with low erosion potential. As I've said, look for productivity of soil. You can find that in that web soil survey. Uh, and then low potential, I mean, that's uh, for erosion. That goes without saying that's anything steep. You start talking about 5, 6, 7% slope, that's too steep. You're going to lose all of your topsoil. Consider stay in place with prevailing winds prior to site selection. This is something I've thrown there because I see a lot of people mess up on this. They don't have any idea where the deer may be coming from, or they don't look at the prevailing winds uh, where they think the deer may be and how they're coming, and they'll set their stand up. We've got a place now in the place that I hunt, and it's got a large stand right in the middle of the 20 acre field. Well, it's right in the middle of it. You go in there and hunt that stand in the afternoon, what's going to happen? Deer's going to fill up in the evening, but you're going to run them out every time you go to get down out of that stand.